Alrighty, good evening. It is um, <coughs> 5.35 on September 12th, 2018. It is the monthly meeting of the Urbana Human Relations Commission. Can we please have a roll call? Francis Rigberg Baker. Carol Bradford. Here. Stacy Burnett. Here. Lisa Mosley. Here. Daniel Larson. Here. Peter Resnick. Here. Catalina Thomas. Samuel Bindham. Lolita Dumas. Here. Brianna Donnell. Thank you. Um, looking over tonight's agenda, are there any additions, edits, or corrections that need to be made? If not, is there a motion to approve? Move approval of the agenda. I second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Oh, there comes Sam. Sorry. Uh, okay, our next item is a quick looking over the minutes from our July 11th meeting. Are there any additions, edits, or corrections? If not, is there a motion to approve? I move we approve the minutes. A second. Any, any discussion? I don't mean to rush, but okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Thank you. All righty, we are moving quite along. Uh, public participation is next on the order. Give it a sec. Okay, seeing none, hearing none. We, uh, we have old business, and we are discussing um, the a and mechanical decision. Where, we, where should we start, Vasilia? You, you guys recall that we did not approve them for uh, continued work with the city. Uh, as a result of that, uh, we sent a letter out to them, and they uh, responded. I think all of you were sent copies of their response. In addition, um, Monique also followed up with them and called and asked them if they would like to attend the meeting, tonight's meeting, and uh, they were not interested in doing such. So that's pretty much where we are. So the question becomes to, to the commission, if you, any further recommendations for them? Peter. Peter. So, I, I mean, I read through the letter that they sent back. It, it was lacking in any real signal that they are making any um, effort, uh, you know, that they are making appropriate strides toward getting the workforce to look a little more representative. Um, we have a, two issues. One is we've got to deal with the union um, hiring practices, and, and that's a separate discussion to have. Um, my inclination would be that we simply um, decertify them. We've not done that officially yet. Have you had any discussion with city staff about what that will mean, what that will entail? I, I mean, we, we have the power to do it. Mm -hmm. I just kind of want to get my head around what it's going, what the outcome is going to be. Well, uh, we have spoken to individuals that will be impacted by that decision, but we haven't had a formal a meeting and discussion and where I can identify formally to back to the commission the impact that will have on the city. So certainly I can do that. I can schedule a meeting. Primarily it's public works that will be impacted. I, I'm just going to quickly look up the, uh, the code section and see what precisely we're calling this. Um, this is the 2119 stuff, right? Yes. Okay, so my read is this is officially more of a recommendation to the mayor, because the way it reads is um, if we find that they're not complying, then the chair will inform the non-complying person of the nature and extent of the non-compliance. 
if the non-compliance persists, the chairperson, um, the mayor, and the non-complying person shall, to get, uh, uh, shall together examine the charges of non-compliance, and if the mayor concurs in the findings, then the non-complying person will be ineligible. Um, sounds like we need some sort of write-up of the, what we consider to be the non-compliance and have Dan send that to the to a and r and copy the mayor so that they know what exactly we're doing here yes would you like for me to prepare a draft for your consideration dan i would or, I, <laughs> I, I just it feels a little bit out of my comfort yeah or i'd help whatever be yeah. yes please okay. any <clears throat> yes so and maybe maybe if peter has the time and willingness to be involved I'd welcome it too. But okay. Or anyone else. I don't mean to exclude. Just that's let, in his let wheelhouse me, a little bit. Let me put a motion on the floor just so we can have a vote. Um, so I move that we find A and R mechanic. Is it A and R mechanical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I move that we find A and R mechanical non-complying with section two one one nine of the Urbana um, uh, uh, municipal code. Um, and inform a and r that we find them non-complying so moved i second it okay any discussions any questions any comments i think that's a good next step just because yep. it'll give you time to vasilia to determine the impact on the city who would they look to in place of or all of those different details i'm sure the people involved would have concerns with us. Okay. That's a idea. okay all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. opposed the same thank you all right um i believe is that, that wraps up all business we have no new business on our agenda tonight so i believe we can jump to our staff report so uh the mic is still yours vasilia okay where um, would you like us to begin let's start with the eeo EEO workforce st statistics. Okay, well, we've got a fair amount of new applications and renewals. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Should we separate them out into new and then renewals? If that's okay? Yes, yes. Already? Would you like a motion? If you, yes, please. I'd like to start with the new applications. Oh, sorry. My glasses aren't as strong. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'd like to recommend that Cora May, Canon Design, FMG Architects, Mid-State Sewer, Electronic Data Collection, and Alasso Performance Solutions um, are recommended for two-year certification. Is there a second? For purposes of discussion, a second. Okay. Discussion, questions, comments? Peter. So my first was on, well, actually, my only question in this section is Canon. Yeah. Um, they're located in Chicago. And what I'm seeing is their overall minority numbers get to 20%, but their overall minority numbers get to 20% because they've got a large number of Asian Pacific Islander employees. I and an exceedingly low number of African-American employees, g given their po total population. Um, well, one of the things that come to mind, and I, I don't have an answer for, is how, mon how many of these 982 employees would actually be working here in Urbana? Right? Yeah, and they didn't list anything in, in their application on that. Um, do we know what service they provide? Uh, architecture engineering. They gave an RFP number, but yeah. With this particular um, design, there's actually four people that are bidding um, for the city of Urbana. This is one of the ones that we're bidding um, we don't know the specifics of what they're bidding. It is something through Public Works. Um, they did not specify who would be working for the City of Urbana because they don't have to per the questionnaire that we, we ask. Um, 
I'd be more than happy to reach out to the person that's handling um, these bids and just ask them to reach out to see how many people would be assigned to the city of Urbana. But I, I would say in all honesty, I mean, they didn't provide uh, an affirmative action EEO statement beyond our standard form. Um, they didn't really give us a whole lot to go on and given that it's in Chicago, you would think that they would have a little more um, a, a little more information to give us. So that, that's the only one that's giving me pause. Everything else, I think, obviously the recommendations are fine. Do you have a recommendation that you would like to see move forward? I, I guess, I mean, do we know the timing on this? Was this one of last month's or is this? So we're already behind on this one. Uh, oh, yeah, this, they sent it in in May. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I wish we had a little more information that we could get out of them, but delaying this another month, I take it, is going to start to make people tense. We could actually just give them a six-month. Right. And that at least get them on notice that they have to provide us with more information. Yes. Put um, Public Works on notice that they might have a problem in six months, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that might okay. move the wheels along. So, do we slight amendment to the. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll propose motion. a friendly amendment mm -hmm. to change uh, Canon design to six months. Any last questions or comments? All right. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose the same. Thank you. All right. Now we have a bunch of renewals. Peter. So I've got a couple of questions. CDW, the numbers are something screwy. Um, the numbers they sent in, because they even listed what they thought last time they had, and the numbers don't match up in the right columns. Um, do we have time to just ask them to resubmit with correct numbers? or? Well, um, um, Monique just informed me that the current numbers that you see, 730, Yep. Is, is, is there Illinois numbers? So last time they put in nationals and this time they put in mm -hmm. state. Yes. How handy. <laughs> I was just trying to Google them to see if they downsized or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other questions I've got. Um, for for Visu sewer is that the way you say it I think so um, it looks like their numbers moved around a bit um, it looks like they lost african-american employees mm -hmm. gained some Latino employees um, 
Can you talk about the two-year recommendation uh, as opposed to the one? I, I mean, what what shifted in what way and? Well, basically, the two-year recommendation is just based on just their overall minority representation. That it increased. Yes. It was a 6 percent increase. So. Are there any other questions or comments? Well, wanting more information, would you want to do a, a six month for CDW as well, just to get the ball rolling, or I think saying we'd like better? I think information or given that CDW did have in their application um, what they thought the previous report was, um, it looks like, so for instance, um, they had previous white 446, total white 461, um, previous black or African American 29, current 22, so that dropped even though the oh so the population went down a few from 733 to 730 they gained white employees lost african american employees lost asian employees um gained a few asian female employees I, I guess since we're not comparing apples to apples, the first was all national, and this is well. But they stuff. they have in the the set that they've got um, in the form that they filled out. I'm looking at online. Okay. No, they no. gave a previous total for Illinois. Okay. okay. Um, and it looks like the overall numbers stayed about the same. They lost three employees total, but when you look across the categories. They increased white employees um, overall, decreased African American employees overall, um, basically broke even with Asian employees, and then there are a few other categories where um, they either dropped or broke even. I, I just, I'm not convinced the numbers look that great on CDW that we should give them two years. I mean, obviously the numbers on the spreadsheet are just goofy because they submitted different numbers this time. But even the numbers that they did submit, something's off about. They're not going in the right direction. Would you feel better for one year recommendation? I, I think that makes sense. I mean, the rest of these, I, I think I'm fine with the, uh, with the recommendations, Vizu Sewer, I get why we're doing the two years. Mm -hmm. It's not great, but it's probably an improvement, an improvement of some sort. Um, hard to tell what exactly they did. The rest of them look fine. Will we be um, able to consider the one year with uh, six month kind of check in? So, what is, is there a procedural difference for you between six months and one year other than, I mean, do they get the same sort of letter or is it just more sternly worded or how does that work? They get the same sort of letter. So it's just when we would make them come back to show, yeah. are we giving them six months or are we giving them one year? Okay. And since we gave them a year last time and the numbers drifted, it, I mean, <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't look great, they didn't look you know, horrific, so. 
Okay, is there a, mo uh, a motion on the floor, potentially? Okay, I think I can pull this off. Um, I move that we approve. CD renew. Sorry, renew. Uh, we renew. Pardon me. CDW Government LLC for one year. Uh, Woodlard Marketing Consultants for two years. Vizush Sewer for two years. Crawford Murphy and Tilly for one year. EJ Equipment for one year. Burns Clancy and Associates for two years. Brown Wooden Associates for two years. Health Alliance for one year. Carl Foundation for two years. Clark Dietz for two years. Farnsworth Group for two years. And Fair Graham for one year. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Any last uh, questions or comments? <coughs> Discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed the same. All right. Thank you. Let's see. Should we move on to the HRO activity report? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, do you, you guys all have this, right? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I've not I'm noticing in the last few months is that I'm getting a lot of housing type of inquiries. Um, and that's what you're, you're seeing here is the, <coughs> the three inquiries that um, I received since our last reporting is all housing related even though they're, they are not, they don't rise to the level of a complaint with the city uh, as it relates to the, uh, the human rights ordinance. But I was thinking that uh, perhaps it's time for us to consider doing some type of housing workshop like we did for employment. Mm -hmm. Because not only are, am I getting inquiries from pot, uh, potential tenants, but I'm also getting qu uh, inquiries from property owners and, and landlords uh, asking in particular about the felony conviction protected classification. So um, I'm not sure when it's realistic for us to um, try to plan workshops, but may, maybe early spring of next year would be ample time for me to plan it and, and get the word out. And um, maybe we would have two sessions, one for property managers and one for folks who are just seeking uh, housing and want to understand their rights in Urbana. Mm -hmm. Great. Sounds wonderful. Is there one certain location, or is it like complaints coming from? in terms of apartment complexes? Or, no, you know, it's general questions, um, and um, there, there there really seems to be um, serious concerns about not from the tenant perspective, but from the the landlord perspective that uh, the the felony conviction uh, protected class is particularly um, concerning for them. And for those of you who weren't on when we did the employment one, we went through this with employers as well because there was this absolute panic about, you mean I'm going to be required to hire rapists and murderers? Mm -hmm. And we had to sort of go through the, no, you have to not look at simply the conviction as disqualifying, you actually have to check all of the other things first. Mm -hmm. For the most part, that means that you want to make sure they're credit worthy, you want to make sure that they have references, et cetera, and so forth. Chances are someone who's a rapist or a murderer is not going to have those things anyway. Exactly. And what you care about is their qualifications as a tenant, in exactly. this case, it, or an employer, an employee, not whether it says they have a conviction check mark. Um, so I think we can go through the same kind of thing of have those mm -hmm. discussions with landlords, explain a process that they can use to review applications without just having a checkbox that they throw in the trash. Absolutely. And the, the third I issue that I have listed, it, this was reported to, to my office by the tenant union that there was an advertisement, uh, a website advertisement that that specifically stated that uh, the con that you would be um, not considered qualified if you had some uh, various types of convictions mm -hmm. that they wouldn't basically even take an application. 
I, I sent them a letter. I contacted the company and explained to them that that violated Urbana's human rights ordinance, and they have since changed their website. So, good. Thank you. Um, and then I have. Hi, Preston. <laughs> I have just a, a, a short narrative of other and other duties as assigned. <laughs> this <could be> interesting. <laughs> and I will quickly go through this. I think you are, you guys are familiar with the vehicle for hire ordinance. It was it was approved by city council. The amendments recommended. And uh, on July 23rd, um, and the Human Relations Commission will serve as the hearing body for any appeals for <coughs> anyone denied uh, licensing by the city based on a conviction. And number two, we're still working on the language for the um, minority business owned um, contractors. Um, Ty will present next month at the meeting, at the HRC meeting, uh, the, his, the recommended changes that we're, we will ultimately end up with. And we want input and feedback from the commission, so we're going to do everything possible to get you guys the draft a couple of weeks before the meeting to give you an ample opportunity to look over it. Okay. Uh, the community awareness campaign. It's still an ongoing thing. Um, I haven't done <coughs> quite as much work on this part as I would have liked to, um, but we, are, we do have the library and uh, the Workforce Development uh, Center lined up to do uh, the three to five minute videos that we've promised. And basically it's just, tr we want to start informing the community of what we have available in the community as it relates to technology. And the community police relations is an ongoing thing. Um, I have to say that Preston has been an absolute blessing for the city of Urbana. He brings with him the law enforcement background. He has excellent uh, interpersonal skills as it relates to the community relations. So he has just been working tirelessly in this particular area and have been making, and he's going to report on some of the things he's been doing, but has been making great strides. So kudos to Preston. And the MLK committee, planning committee has been working. We will meet tomorrow uh, for the first time in person. We've been doing conference calls up until this point. I'm sorry, next, oh, so it's next Thursday. Okay, so that will be the 20th rather than the 13th. And um, we have identified a keynote speaker. We will be prepared to announce who that is uh, at our next meeting. The vehicle for hire is going to require some hearing rules. And I'm sure hoping that I can get input from a number of people, but we need to be ready to go by November. With, with that. And on page two, I just listed some of the activities and, uh, that I, have, I was involved in over in July, August. And one of the things I'd like to mention, I'm not sure that we got to have a couple of social workers, I believe, on the commission. And I attended a trauma training workshop put on by Karen Sims, and it was absolutely excellent. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with her. Mm -hmm. It was excellent. So I'm not sure if as a, as a body we could, do, we could host or uh, some type of event that may give, give uh, greater exposure to the work that she does. But I was very, very impressed with her presentation. And it was about two hours. It was like a two-hour workshop. We've had Ms. Sims come into our school to help make it a more trauma-informed school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. She does good stuff. And last but not least, uh, and Preston will talk about this a little bit, um, the um, Champaign County Expungement and Record Sealing Summit is scheduled for October 6th. 
at Stone Creek, and it will run from 8.30 until 5 p.m. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay, Preston has a couple things he'd like to share. Good evening, everyone. Come on. No, there I go. Good evening, everyone. All right, so we'll start by just giving a little, just piggyback off of what uh, Vasilia just spoke about is the expungement summit. Uh, we're right in the middle of the amnesty week, uh, which runs from the 10th through the 14th. For those of you who um, in the audience or, or in participation or here currently uh, don't know what amnesty week is, um, it allows people who have uh, old fines through the Champaign County uh, court system um, to get those taken care of without the collection or late fees. Um, so which can rack up to like 30% of that fine. Um, so it, it's from, it started on the 10th and you have a couple more days and ends on the 14th. Um, if, if anybody out there um, needs to get, take care of some old fines, now would be the time to do it. Um, as far as the expungement summit is, is concerned, it will be on the October 6th, like uh, Vasilya advised. Um, they are in the process of getting the um, resource and job fair uh, filled. Um, the, our human relations department will not be uh, able to make it this year because we'll be out of town. But uh, it would be nice if some of you would man a table uh, if available on October 6th, um, just to provide information for some of the uh, participants that are coming through. Um, if you are interested, we can contact the Champaign County uh, Circuit Clerk's Office. Um, Brian Kelly is the contact person there, um, and we can get that squared away. Is there any questions about that before I move on? Yes, go ahead, Vasily. If, if there is one or two people who would be interested in participating, like manning a table, uh, if you would contact me or Preston, then we would, we'll coordinate with Brian, Brian if that's yes. okay. okay. All right, so uh, the next thing we want to touch on is the, uh, the city of Urbana um, went, went into an initiative. Um, we're trying this trial period of uh, a fix-it ticket program. Uh, for those of you who have or have not heard of it, um, the, what we're doing is uh, the city of Urbana um, set aside $2,500 to um, provide vouchers to people who get pulled over in the city of Urbana who have either a headlight out um, tail light out, tag light, blinker light, something of, of that sort. Um, if you have a um, busted tail light, headlight, because you hit a pole, we're not fixing that, <laughs> right? Um, but if it's a light bulb issue, um, we, what, what would occur would they would be contacted by the law enforcement officer in the city of Urbana. Um, they would um, be spoken to about the um, equipment violation, and then with their warning ticket, as long as there's no other violations, you know, like DUI or warrant or driving a or suspended or revoked license, uh, they would get this voucher along with it and they could take the voucher to Advanced Auto here on Vine Street and Advanced then logs that, will go out and repair and, and actually put the bulb in the vehicle as long as it's able to be done without having to lift the vehicle up. Mm -hmm. And they then bill the city for that bulb. Um, now I have a breakdown of um, what we've done so far. Now this, this ends, this stops on the 2nd of September. As of the 2nd, we had 99 vouchers issued. Um, out of those, 99, we had 81 that were redeemed, which is, is pretty, good, uh, pretty good numbers. Um, the total for the month of July and August 
came up to four hundred and seventy six dollars and fifty seven cent for the ninety nine well for the eighty one vouchers that were redeemed. Um, the breakdown on the drivers that were stopped were fifty one white, thirty nine black, five Asian, three Hispanic, and one other. Don't ask me how we got a other, I, I still don't know. Um, but we do have another, which, so the average um, per bulb has come out to $7.11 per voucher so far. The program started uh, with this new fiscal year. Yes, started ju July 1 um, of this year and it's gonna run through July 1 or until the money runs out, which I don't think we're going to get there. But tell how much did you get? I did, 2500 oh. Yes. How do they determine who gets a voucher? Uh, anybody, as long as you don't have any other, like your driver's license not suspended or revoked, or um, you don't have um, alcohol, you know, spilling out of, of your vehicle, um, anybody, if, if, it's a, if it's a Jaguar, you get it. If it's a uh, 82 box Chevy, you get it um, and well you at least you're offered it you, you don't have to accept it you know you can you can say okay I, I don't want it I don't need it um, we've also uh, thanks to Vasilia she came up with this idea and, and I love it um, that starting this month um, we put a survey together and so once people bring the voucher in they will fill out a, it's a four question survey about how they feel about the, the, the program and things of that nature. Um, they, don't have to put, they don't put their names under anything uh, or, or the ticket number. They just provide this information, this feedback to say whether they think the program is worthwhile and, and give us something to kind of uh, measure. That was a good question. Any other questions? I think that's it for me. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things I'm doing with the reentry council and all the other stuff, but we can talk about that offline. What's the next step for the police community relations uh, work that you're doing? Well, um, well, there's a whole bunch of things going on. So the next thing, the thing that we're actually working on now is to tally um, all the information that we got from our last community meeting um, and get that ready to release to the people who um, came to the meeting um, and then see what step we want what steps we want to do next um, we're also working um, now this is not solidified yet but something we're working on um, you know coming up we have national uh, coffee with a cop day and uh, so we're working on a location and, and, and how that would work out um, within the next month. So that, that's just a couple other things. Play days at the parks with mm -hmm. police and the kids, uh, working on this Halloween um, thing that's coming up where the law enforcement is involved through the um, uh, Urbana Library, um, like a trick or treat with a cop type situation. Um, just, just to name a few. Oh, and, and we have a new interim chief, if you guys didn't know. Uh, Brian Serafin, who was the assistant chief, is currently our interim chief. And Bob Fitzgerald is our interim assistant chief. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. Go along. Okay. Any announcements uh, for the month? I have a Eight. couple of announcements. Sure, we'll leave it. Um, I just wanted to share, I sent you guys an email about, it's actually called Voices of Community Hill and Dialogue, and I just wanted to share, I actually attended it on September 8th. It was actually something that was collaborative between the University of Illinois and some community, um, community members. Um, Chandra Somerville was involved, as well as Tracy Dates. So I just wanted to share with you guys that was just involving, um, I won't say recent gun violence, because we actually have had gun violence in this community is just kind of spread and kind of went rampant and we have had some in Urbana as well um, I just wanted to just kind of share how it kind of crosses over um, that incident with the student in Central 
Um, there was actually, he actually touched lives in Urbana as well. And so there's actually a student of Urbana that's actually going to have an event in October to kind of pull together community members as well. So kind of look out for that. So I'll be sharing that with you guys as well. So just wanted to highlight and let you guys know that actually our representative Ammons came out and actually our um, councilman Aaron Ammons was out, actually out there as well. So just wanted to share that we did, you know, have a crossover Champagne Urbana that participated. And then to also let you guys know that um, Urbana Champagne Books to Prisoners is going to have their biannual book sale, which is going to be on November 3rd. So please come out because we don't want to forget that population because they will be coming back to our community. So just wanted to make you aware of that, and I'll be sending that flyer. Thank you. Any other announcements for the month? Peter. A very quick one, more of a note than an announcement. Uh, in the paper yesterday was a discussion of the City Council meeting on Monday where they talked about the new development north of Bradley. Um, and one of the things that was said in the article was that there was some pushback because the company involved had a no convictions clause in their lease. And the quote from uh, uh, Alderman Ammons was, we're all very concerned uh, given the concern about housing to deny people felony convictions, that's just a non-starter for me. But I thought it might be important to say out loud that it's not only a non-starter for him, it's illegal in this city. Um, and so um, if, if there's any question um, by city council about this that continues since they kept it in committee, I think it would be worth staff noting that yes, the Human Relations Commission also considers it a non-starter because it's not legal. Perhaps the commission might want to send the mayor a formal letter of support as it relates to that issue. Uh, I think it would be very helpful. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. Uh, any uh, final announcements? All right. Well, thank you all. Um, everybody have a good month. This meeting is adjourned.